When we launch Corel Painter for the first time, we're greeted by the welcome menu. The welcome menu makes it quick and easy to get started with Corel Painter. We can navigate through the welcome menu from the left side of the window. What's new is currently selected, and this page features new content and resources for Corel Painter. Next, let's take a look at the Get Started page, which can be useful for quickly creating or opening your art projects. There are options to create a new canvas or to open pre-existing compositions. And there's a list of document templates that can be used as a starting point. Once we begin creating artwork in Corel Painter, a list of our recent documents will appear on this page as well. Let's go ahead and move on to the Setup page. The left side of the Setup page allows you to quickly configure Corel Painter to look and feel a certain way. We'll come back to this in a later lesson when we discuss workspace customization. On the right side of the Setup page, there is an option to apply brush tracking. Brush tracking refers to the pressure sensitivity of your drawing tablet's pen. Corel Painter allows you to calibrate all of your brushes globally, or you can calibrate each individual brush with unique settings. Beneath brush tracking, we can also choose our color management settings. I'll be discussing both of these settings later in this course. Feel free to experiment with the different layouts to see if there's one that you like best. I'll be demonstrating how to create your own custom layouts as we progress through this course, so I'll go ahead and leave the default layout selected. Next, we'll move on to performance. The performance page presents us with the Brush Accelerator, which is a utility that analyzes your computer hardware and then automatically chooses optimal performance settings for your system. The Brush Accelerator also provides feedback about how well your computer can run Corel Painter, and it indicates how you might be able to upgrade components to improve performance. If your computer supports the Brush Acceleration features, it will allow stamp-type brushes to leverage your GPU or graphics processing unit, which can significantly improve brush performance. The Brush Acceleration dialog can be accessed from several locations within Corel Painter. You can find it under Performance in the Welcome menu. It can also be found in the Corel Painter Preferences under Performance. You can also find it under Advanced in the Properties bar. Then click on the Brush Accelerator in the Performance panel. I'll choose the Brush Accelerator that is located in the Welcome menu. It's important to run this before you do anything else to ensure Painter is running optimally on your system. Before I run the test, I want to close any unnecessary applications that might be running on my computer. I've already run the Brush Accelerator, so you'll want to click on Optimize Now. I'm going to click on Rerun Report. Once the test starts, some brush strokes will begin to appear on the test canvas. Be sure not to press any buttons on your keyboard or do anything else on your computer until the test is finished. Once the test is complete, you'll be presented with your score. The score gives you an idea of how well your computer is able to run Corel Painter. You may notice that my score has gone down. This is because I'm now using more computer resources to record my screen. I know there are a lot of artists out there who already know a CPU from a GPU, but I'm going to do my best to kind of break this down into layman's terms so everybody can understand the information being presented here. Corel Painter says my brush benchmark score is excellent. Next to that, I can see which of the components are responsible for accelerating the performance of Painter and the distribution of their effect. First is base speed, which isn't contributing very much to performance. Next is the multi-core processing from my CPU, and that's helping a little bit. But what's having the greatest effect on my system is the GPU, or graphics processing unit. Beneath the brush benchmark score, you have a score that says whether or not you meet the recommended specifications for Corel Painter. And then to the right of that, you have more detailed information about each of the components that are contributing to brush performance. I can see that I have six CPU cores in my computer, and that's two more than the recommended four cores. So the green cylinder indicates that my CPU passes the test. If you're seeing a yellow or red cylinder, that signals that there is an opportunity to improve the performance of Painter by upgrading your CPU. Your CPU is the basic core of your computer, so having more cores available for your operating system and other applications you may be running in the background is highly recommended. Or in other words, Corel Painter requires four cores, but you may require another two to four cores for everything else running on your computer. More cores also improves brush performance, but even on my system, which has a fairly powerful CPU, multi-core isn't really contributing much to my boost in performance. Next, we have AVX2, which are instructions that your CPU can use to improve the performance of brushes in Painter. It's recommended that your processor supports this feature. Moving on to GPU, we can see that a compatible graphics card is recommended for accelerating brushes in Corel Painter. 
Your graphics card might be something that you purchased separately and plugged in, or it might be something that's built into your computer. My NVIDIA GTX 1080 is ranked as compatible, so that's good. If you have a powerful video card installed, but it's not listed as compatible, there are known compatibility issues with some video cards, and unfortunately there is not an official list of cards for you to reference. In some cases, an incompatible GPU score can be resolved by selecting the correct video card if you have multiple GPUs on your system. I will discuss how to do that later in this course. The last component in the brush accelerator is memory. We can see that I have 31.9 gigabytes of RAM. The recommended value is 8, so as long as you have at least that much RAM, Painter will be happy. Now let's bring all of this information together to paint a picture of how Painter is utilizing our computer resources. What my report is telling me is that my system can take full advantage of Corel Painter's brush acceleration features, with my GPU contributing the most to performance. Based on this score, I should expect excellent overall performance. Sure, I could upgrade my computer to one that has 12 cores, and buy an even more powerful GPU, but this report indicates that there would be diminishing returns on my investment. Corel Painter already has what it needs to get the job done, and any more hardware power might go unused. If I were running the brush accelerator on a different system, I might have fewer cores, I might not have a nice video card, and I might have less memory, in which case these wouldn't be green cylinders, they would be yellow or red. That would also make my score much lower and negatively impact brush performance. If that's the case, this is an opportunity to upgrade your components or your computer, if your goal is to get Painter working at peak performance. Now a low score doesn't mean that you can't use Corel Painter, it just means that certain brushes may work more slowly. There are workarounds, like working on a smaller canvas or painting with the fast and simple or fast and ornate brush categories, which will allow you to enjoy Corel Painter even on underpowered computers. Beneath the cylinder icons, there is a button that says learn more about your results, with more information on how to interpret the report. For example, if your GPU processor is gray, that may indicate that your computer's CPU is more powerful than the GPU at accelerating brushes, so the GPU is not being utilized. If your GPU score is red, that would indicate your GPU does not support OpenCL 1.2 or higher, which is required by Corel Painter. If your GPU does support OpenCL 1.2, then make sure you have the latest graphics card drivers installed and run the test again. It also says that you can use Brush Search to locate the brushes that use GPU, AVX2, and Multicore to boost brush performance. I'll show you how to do that later in this course. Moving on to the next page in the Welcome menu, let's take a look at Tutorials. This page features a collection of tutorials by Corel Painter Masters like myself. These lessons go more in-depth into specific topics and techniques you can apply to Painter. The final page in the Welcome menu is Store. Here you can browse for additional brush packs and paper textures to purchase. There are tons of different kinds of brushes and papers available that can create a wide range of natural effects, art styles, design elements, and more. This page also features special offers and even the occasional hardware and software that can be used with Corel Painter. You can filter the results over on the right, and if you have purchased content, you can use the filters to show only your purchased content by clicking on My Library. By default, the welcome menu is going to appear every time you launch Corel Painter, and it will display whichever page you had selected. In my opinion, the Get Started page is the most useful page to show upon launching Corel Painter because it gives you access to your recent documents and document templates. However, if you don't want the welcome menu to appear every time you launch Corel Painter, then you can click on the gear icon in the top right of the window, and then uncheck Show This at Startup. Next time we launch Corel Painter, the welcome menu will remain hidden. Clicking on the X in the top right will close the welcome menu. Should you ever want to get the welcome menu back, just go to the help menu and choose welcome to restore it. I'll go ahead and close the welcome menu and we can move on to creating a new canvas. In order to start painting, we need to create a new canvas. To do that, we can go to file, new. Now when I say canvas, I don't necessarily mean you're gonna be painting literally on a canvas. Your canvas can be paper, wood, stone, or any kind of substrate. But in digital art terms, the document you're working on is referred to as the canvas. When we choose to create a new canvas, we get the new image dialog. Here we can give our painting a title. I'll just call this test one. The most important settings here are the width, height, and resolution. The width and height will determine the intended size of the canvas. 
Right now, our unit of measurement is set to pixels. We can change this to inches, centimeters, points, picas, and columns. Most commonly, you'll be using inches if you're creating artwork for print. If you're creating artwork specifically for the web, then you'll be using pixels. Let's go ahead and just set it to inches. Now, we don't want to just choose an arbitrary width and height. We want to choose a canvas size that'll match standard frame and print sizes, such as 4x6, 8x10, 11x14, and 18x24. Choosing a standard print and frame size ensures that your image matches the size of the paper or canvas you're using for your print. If the image does not match your print size, then the artwork will have to be cropped, or you'll have to add a border around your artwork. Another advantage to using a common print size is that the aspect ratio of the image remains constant as you scale larger or smaller. For example, if I created a canvas that is 18 by 24 inches, I can also scale the print down to 16 by 20, 11 by 14, and 8 by 10 without cropping too much off. When choosing a canvas size, try to imagine the largest you would want to print the image, and then make your decision based on that. That's because when it comes to resizing artwork, Scaling your image smaller doesn't harm the image quality, but if you try to enlarge your artwork, it's going to become blurry and pixelated. So resizing artwork is kind of a one-way street. Let's go ahead and choose 10 inches wide by 8 inches tall. The next setting is resolution, which determines the amount of detail in the image. A painting with a higher resolution will have sharper, finer details than a low-resolution painting. If you look closely at a high-resolution painting, you will see more detail than you would if you zoomed into a low-resolution painting. There are some general rules that you can follow to choose an ideal resolution. If you will be printing your artwork, 300 pixels per inch is the standard resolution, but you can certainly add or remove resolution to suit your needs. If you're working in pixels, you don't have to worry about the resolution since the image will be displayed based on its pixel dimensions. I'm not going to dive too deep into how resolution affects the width and height of your artwork in this lesson, but I do have a reference video you can watch about that subject if you want to learn more. Another important consideration when choosing a resolution is file size. Extra large or very high resolution canvases require a lot more processing power from your computer. Corel Painter will begin to behave slowly the larger a file you create. For example, 18 by 24 inches or larger is a good threshold for starting to reduce your resolution. You could reduce the resolution to 240 or even 150. That's because this is a larger piece of artwork, and if you were to print this out at this resolution, it would likely be viewed from a distance and not up close like a smaller print would be. As a rule of thumb, the larger the width and height of the print, the lower the resolution can be. The smaller the artwork, the higher the resolution can be. I'll set the resolution to 300, and that's the canvas we'll be working with for this demonstration. It is possible to create canvas presets to reuse later, We'll dive a bit deeper into how to do that later in this course. Beneath resolution are the orientation buttons. You can use these to swap the width for the height and rotate the canvas orientation. On the right side of the new image dialog are canvas options. You can change the canvas or paper color if you want to tone it, and you can choose the paper texture. We're going to look at how to use these later in this course, so we'll just leave these set to their defaults. Beneath that there is a checkbox for start painting on a layer. By toggling this on, Painter will automatically create a blank layer for you to paint on. Below the checkbox is a menu for layer type. Here you can choose the type of layer you want to create. We'll discuss layer types later in this course, so for now, we'll just set it to default. If you plan to paint on a transparent background, you can also turn on the Hide Canvas checkbox. And the last setting in the New Image dialog allows you to set the color profile for the composition. We'll be coming back to color profiles later, so I'll leave it at its default. Once I click on OK, Painter will create my 8x10 canvas with the layer settings I chose. If you're working on a Mac, my screen may look a little bit different than yours because I'm working on a Windows computer. My canvas appears in a window. Personally, I don't like this windowed mode, so I will maximize the window to fill my workspace and surround my canvas with a gray background. You can watch the rest of this lesson and more by purchasing this course from my website at aaronrutten.com.